Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's class, the Windsor Newton Yarrow Wall Art. My name is Tim DePack, and I'm from Windsor Newton. I'll be your moderator today. I'm being joined by Shailene Louise, who will be your artist instructor for today's class. And Shailene will be taking through today's class by providing information about the products being used in the class, showing you how to perform some of her favorite watercolor painting techniques and creating these beautiful yarrows using the Windsor Newton cotton watercolor paints. She'll also give you a sneak peek at some of her upcoming classes, and I'll provide for you in the chat the link for you to sign up for those classes. Uh, before we begin, if you saw previously, I'm going to drop right now in the chat box the link for the sketch outline. If you did not get that, the link is there for you. Uh, also, upon completion of this class, you'll receive a survey in your email inbox. Please let us know what you thought about the class, how we did, and if there are any particular topics that you'd like to see Shailene perform in the future during one of her classes. As we're about to begin, please feel free to follow along and paint with Shailene or sit back and relax and enjoy the class. And then you can watch the replay at a later date upon completion as this uh, class will be recorded and available 24 hours after completion on the Michael's YouTube channel. And with that being said, I'm gonna pass the class over to Shailene. All right, hello everybody. Um, Shailene here, good to see you guys. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be painting a Yarrow watercolor. The finished version we're going to be trying to work towards today. And it's a pretty simple technique, but it does require quite a bit of detail. And um, yeah, it's, it's not the easiest painting, but it's a simple technique. So you're gonna do great, I, I believe in you. So let's switch to overhead view. I'm gonna talk you through some supplies and then we'll get started. So here's my sketch. I'm gonna pull this over here. We're gonna work from that. I'm going to be sketching in real you already sketched ahead of time, that's totally great. Um, but I'm gonna just try and paint, uh, sketch it freehand. So I have a size five and a size one round. These are uh, cotton brushes. And today I'm going to be using cotton watercolors from Windsor Newton. These are sap green. I'm gonna use a little bit of burnt sienna and alizarin crimson. And I'm just going to change my a little bit so I can see my screen. Okay, so I have a just a regular click pencil, uh, paper towel, and some water. And I am using cold press uh, seven by ten paper. So getting started here. I'm just going to take a look at my sketch here and just um, kind of take inventory. So. I just want it to feel really balanced. We kind of have like a top section, a section. Um, the trick to making this yarrow really beautiful, I think is just making sure it's, it's really full, has lots of detail, feels really balanced. Um, I'm not gonna make as detailed of a sketch as I did over here, just because I don't find that it's that necessary. Um, but I, I just kind of want a, a guideline. So I'm going to start with kind of this main stem, you see, just starting over here at the top and then kind of bends right around here, comes back down. All right, so just that center stem. Over here, I'm going to make it just kind of splinter into a bunch of different stems. And that's kind of how this plant works, just a lot of stems that just kind of slowly start becoming more and more tiny stems. And you'll see what I'm talking about more so later. Let's saw a few stems coming off to the left. We'll draw a stem coming up this way. It does not need to be perfect. You don't need to try and make it exactly like mine. Mine is not even gonna be exactly like mine. A Couple of stems coming off this way. And how about this? Instead of drawing these little parachute shapes, I'm just gonna draw just a kind of, just a little bit of like a kind of that eyebrow shape, I guess, just on the top, just so I can kind of place it, place where these little blossoms are going to be. I wanna have one right here. Little guy over here. I'm 
gonna make a little, another little one over here. How about some of these leaves? See how I have these little teeny leaves coming off? A lot of times in yarrow, I notice that the leaves come out when there is an intersection of stems. It makes ever you see, like especially right here, see how I have three different leaves starting to grow there? So let's go ahead and draw those in. You can just draw these little kind of tooth, toothed edges. I think that's what we call these kinds of leaves. All right, let's let's keep going. Uh, actually, I'm going to draw my little impressions of where these blooms are going to be. And like I said, it does not need to be perfect. It's going to feel amazing. I really think it's going to feel amazing no matter where you put all of your flowers. Um, okay, over here for this last little bit, we're gonna add these top flowers. So let's go ahead and kind of veer off right here. And then let's draw a few more lines reaching up, draw our little eyebrow shapes, just a few more. And just a couple little tiny ones up here on the top. Okay. So this is feeling good. So I'm just, just kind of taking a look at it, making sure that everything feels good. I'm going to add a couple of these little leaves down here. I'll add some leaves right over here at the base of this little teeny flower. And when I'm actually painting it, I'll probably start to add little leaves here and there. We want this sketch to be just a guideline. It does not need to be a detailed sketch by any means. If I was painting a peony or a rose, I would try and make sure that that was a more detailed paint, uh, sketch. But for yarrow, it's, uh, it's more about the painting technique. That's where we get the detail, not so much because of our sketch. So. Hopefully you are at a good spot. I think that I'm about ready to get into painting. So I'm gonna move my sketch out of the frame. And gonna get some colors ready. So again, I'm using a size five and a size one round brush. Um, I'm going to use sap green, alizarin crimson, and burnt sienna today. All right, so I'm gonna start with my size five brush. And what I'll do is I'm going to just get a little, I'm gonna call it a little puddle mixed here with alizarin crimson. I'm gonna pull this down for you just so we can have, you know, as, as focused a shot as possible. So I'm just kind of activating this color, rolling my brush around, getting it in the bristles. I want this to be a kind of watery mixture. I don't want it to feel too syrupy. I want there to be some nice movement and flow in it, okay? And this, this is actually going to be a pretty fun, I think this is a really fun flower to paint. It's pretty, uh, it's kind of a repetitive um, technique, but it's, it's really fun. So, all right, so let's get started by, since I'm right-handed, I like to start up with the left and I'll work my way down. If you're left-handed, maybe you want to start on the right and work your way down. But I'm going to start up here at this top flower. And I'm just going to just drop some pink, the alizarin crimson pink mixture. And I'm kind of just dotting it, okay? And this is a light mixture of alizarin crimson. Skip this one here next to it. Let's skip the little teeny one. And then just go to the one right next to it, right below it. So I'm just kind of dabbing it. I want there to be kind of some little white, uh, some little white spots in the midst of it. I don't want you to cover it with color, if that makes sense. 
So it's gonna just be that dabbing technique is how you're gonna kind of get that look. There's a lot of details in yarrow flowers and this is the best way to kind of get So keep your arm relaxed. The nice thing about this technique is it's pretty hard to, hard to make a mistake here. I think no matter how you do this, it's probably gonna look pretty good. All right, that's that part. And let's move over to this part right next door. So I want this little grouping of flowers. I want it to overlap this branch that's coming off to the left. So don't be afraid of, of there being overlap, you know, letting your flowers overlap stems. That's what we want. We want it to feel kind of wild and we want there to be a lot of dimension to it. All right, this one just behind it. And I'm kind of, as I'm painting, I'm not exactly using the tip of my brush. I'm kind of pressing down, turning my brush, kind of coming at it from the right angle, coming at it from a you know, upward angle, and you kind of get different types of little brush marks, which, which is really nice. The, the blots and dabs still look exactly the same. So just kind of keep your hand relaxed and move it around. Very therapeutic process. I love, I love doing this. My paint is drying out pretty quickly, so I have to keep adding water to it. All right, so I'm gonna start working down here. Let's see, I'm gonna start with this, this little patch of flowers here. And you know, all of these kind of have a similar shape, kind of like that, like I said earlier, kind of like a parachute or big fuzzy caterpillar shape. They don't all have to look exactly the same, but that's generally kind of the shape we're going for. And we're doing no color mixing yet. Later on, we're gonna do a teeny bit of color mixing, but today's painting, we're mostly just gonna use colors in their pure form, <laughs> which is kind of rare for me because I love to do color mixing. All right, let me think here. Let's paint this little flower just underneath those two. Another technique I like to do is kind of just twirl my brush in my fingers. It's kind of hard to tell that I'm doing that, but I am kind of doing this and that's helping me get a lot of different looking uh, brush strokes as I'm working. This one, I'm actually drawing it just a little lower than where I actually placed it in my sketch because that placement didn't feel quite right to me. So it's my painting and I get to change things from what I initially planned. Because I'm the boss of this painting. So if you find that you don't like the way it's looking in your sketch, you're always welcome to tweak it and adjust it as you go in. I think I'm gonna do that over here as well, just a little bit. 
So I have just a couple more flowers I'm going to add. I'm going to keep these two little tiny ones. I'm actually just going to keep those. Um, I'm not going to paint them pink. I'm going to add some green. If you already painted your little ones pink, that's okay. It's totally okay if they're pink. I just wanted mine to be kind of like little buds, like they weren't quite bloomed yet. But what you can do if you already painted those little those little lines pink, you can just add some, some little green buds somewhere else. <clears throat> All right, so one more flower down here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so down here, this is going to be the last one. And then I'm going to move over to sap green. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so for sap green, I'm just gonna activate this color here, just like I did for alizarin crimson, just rubbing my brush on that color, kind of getting it loosened, activated. And let's get a nice little green puddle mixed here. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to switch brushes. Because I want to use a, a, a brush with a nice little point for this part. So here we go. So I'm going to switch over to my size one brush. And remember how I mentioned earlier, the kind of the main look of yarrow is, you know, it starts small and then it just kind of explodes. So you start to see just more and more tiny details as you get closer to the flowers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here at this. I'm sure, I got some room for my wrist here. I'm going to start up here at this little flower. And what I want to do is I'm going to pull in my other, my reference. See how there's all these little teeny, little tiny stems that are reaching up to that flower? So that's what we're gonna try and do here. So kind of think like, where is the center of this flower? And so that's gonna be the kind of the point that we're working from. And so what we want to do is just draw, just draw a few lines reaching up. And let me just pull this down. You can really see this detail here. So just draw those few lines. And then what I wanna do is I wanna draw maybe halfway or a third up some of these stems. I want them to just splinter off. And we start getting even thinner lines that are reaching up towards those flowers. And then maybe two thirds up those stems, they can start to reach. They can uh, reach up to those little flowers. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't want every single stem to be connecting to that center point. We want them to start kind of splintering off. So that's a pretty simple technique, but now we just gotta do that over and over for all of these flowers. <laughs> So I'm just using pure sap green here, no color mixing. You're welcome. And then over here, remember how I saved a few of these little tiny buds? I want to just draw just these little green buds. So it's like maybe a flower that hasn't quite bloomed yet. And you can just draw those little teeny stems. Let's do the same techniques. Remember, kind of work from the center point. And like uh, I was saying, I did switch brushes here. So I'm not using my size five brush. I'm using the size one brush because these are some pretty fine little lines that I'm painting here.
All right. It's kind of a meticulous process, but this is how we get that really full kind of lush detailed look. It's easy, it just takes a little bit of time. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and draw a stem that's going to be reaching down. So I'm going to try and make my stems kind of all behind the flowers, if that makes sense. Like I don't really want to draw green over the flowers. Okay, so it kind of looks like, um, yeah, the green is just coming up, peeking up from behind there. And I'm just going to drop in a few places, just a little bit of a darker sap green because it is drawing pretty light. All right, so I now have all of those top flowers finished. So now I'm going to uh, paint some stems. So let's see, how would this make sense? Let's go ahead and just draw a thicker stem line reaching downward uh, over here. Another stem and I'm not perfectly following my pencil drawing, like I said, I probably wouldn't. Only because I want my lines to be pretty straight and kind of the way I place the flower will depend, will determine, you know, the angle at which these lines are going to have to connect. So here we go. Let's draw this line, connect it to this main stem. There we go. We have this stem over here, kind of got hidden behind these flowers. So reach down. There we go. So now I'm going to add just some, some little leaves. So what I want to do is just at the base of a few of these flowers, kind of at the base of all of that, you know, that bunching of all of those stems, Let's just draw a few leaves kind of reaching downward. Really simple little leaves, not a lot to them. Just kind of a loose line and then maybe connect a couple little, those little teeth. <laughs> little leaves coming off of those. Maybe up here we got one, here to the side, each of those. That stem there. And then remember how I mentioned that wherever it kind of splinters, we often see um, a bunch of these little yarrow leaves coming off. So let's draw some that are a little more detailed here. And once you finish your painting and it's totally dry, you should be able to erase all of those pencil markings pretty easily. I don't think you'll have too much of an issue with it. It helps to use a size, two, uh, sorry, a, an F pencil, um, which I generally use, but I like to use my number two pencils for Michael's classes because I want you to be able to see what I'm working on. All right, so back to our little, Teeny details here. All of these little stems reaching up. Oh, 
So always have that center point that you're kind of working from. Just draw a few lines reaching up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have this large one here. So I'm going to get that center point to work from. I have to keep grabbing a darker mixture because my paint is, as it's drying, you can keep adding water, but then when I add water, it gets too light. So I have to kind of keep working it over here. So I have the right consistency. It's looking really good, Shailene, from here. Love it. Oh, thanks. I hope everybody's feeling happy with theirs too. This is kind of one of those paintings that I find that the more I kind of work on this one and keep on keep on working it, I like it more and more. It kind of just takes a little bit to really get that dimension and detail. But the more detail you add, just the more true to, true to nature it's gonna to start to look. So, um, okay, so let's draw these thicker, uh, thicker stems. So just think about where it would connect, where it makes sense. Over here, here's the center. So I'm gonna kind of float over the paper and just kind of trace where that stem would connect. There we go. Okay, so then let's go ahead and draw. Let's keep on reaching down, get this little stem drawn. And then I want to draw some leaves coming off of this. This is a big intersection here. All of these stems growing from right there. So it makes sense that we'd have some leaves growing off from there. We're just kind of following that set, that edge. Let's give it some little, little teeth on each side. Shailene, when you get a second, can you hold, can you bring it up to the screen a little bit just for people to see it, yeah. the details that you have on there? Thank you. Absolutely. So you can definitely see my pencil markings underneath there, but I feel really confident that once this is totally dry, I'll be able to erase those, no problem. I'm just gonna darken a few of my lines because I like it to be a little more on the dramatic side. I want there to be some real dark values. All right, so let's keep on moving. So we kind of have the top part. You know, we got, got to a good place with the top. And now let's get this bottom half done. So I'm just gonna keep on doing my same technique, okay? So just these little thin lines. Always working towards the center. My dad is a uh, he's an engineer. He works at Intel, but he he likes to talk about things like fractals and the Fibonacci sequence, golden ratio. But he was trying to explain to me how that works in flowers, how you see this thing called the Fibonacci sequence. I wish I could explain it because I totally don't get it. But all I know is there's some pretty awesome 
amazing science and design behind what is happening in flowers. And it's pretty neat. I don't understand it though. <laughs> it has something to do with that, like splitting, how everything keeps splitting and then it splits in half and it splits in half again. And kind of how you see in trees, like it starts with one trunk and then it splits and then it splits again. If anybody understands a uh, golden ratio and wants to write a dissertation for us in the comments, that'd be awesome. I love how it looks like you're just having fun, just putting the details everywhere. Oh, it. yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't make mistakes on this because everyone mm -hmm. that you get, it just brings it out more, makes it more detailed. That's so true. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty hard to make a mistake on this one because everything you do is like, well, okay, that just gave it a little more dimension. And some of my lines are maybe a little too thin and some are maybe a little too thick, but it just doesn't matter. This is probably one of the most... Uh, yeah, calming styles of painting because it is really repetitive. And as you slowly work it, you just start to see it come to life. You're just excavating. All right, so let's go ahead and remember what I did up here with the little teeny buds. Let's do the same thing in a couple places. I'm just drawing a few little, little green buds that haven't quite turned pink yet. Okay, and we'll draw some more stems over here. Okay, so let's draw some thicker stems that are reaching down towards our main center stem you know what we can actually do why don't we just start with that center stem right now so it's coming from behind this flower i'm just just kind of tracing letting my pencil float and then let's draw that stem and then reaching over here we got one there We have one here. Draw these little tiny stems real quick on my, my little green bud. One here and then one reaching up behind it. And then I think just a couple more. All right, so then I think this will be the last detail we'll do with the green. We're going to just add some leaves coming off to the right and the left. Give it these little teeth. Okay, and just a couple more here. And then let's do what we did up here. Remember how I just kind of added a few of these little leaves coming off at the bottom of these little clusters. Let's just add a few leaves in a few spots. Just give it a little more, just give it a little more texture, a little more dimension.
straw leaf right here where there's another little breakaway. Oh, what else can we do? Maybe I'll have a little one right back here. Maybe a small one just coming up to the, uh, coming over here in the front. All right, so I'm gonna pull it up a little bit. So I wanna make sure we can see the whole painting. So this is going to be kind of the last step for this painting and hopefully you're, you're feeling really excited about where yours is, where yours is landing right now. So what I'm going to do, what this really needs is these flowers just need a little bit more dimension. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to mix Blizzard Crimson and a little bit of Burnt Sienna. And that's just gonna give me kind of a rusty pink color. It's a little darker and, you know, I told you there'd be a little bit of color mixing. So there we go, <laughs> just a little bit. So Blizzard Crimson, Burnt Sienna. And also I don't wanna forget, I wanted to let you guys know that I, this last week, I actually just launched a Patreon if you're interested in learning just a little more and launching a, just monthly tutorials over there, then, and they might be just a little bit longer, but I promise I'll keep doing Michael's classes. These are definitely in high demand, so. But if you're interested, you can go to patreon.com slash Shailene Louise, and you can learn a little more there. All right, so once this mixture feels kind of like, uh, kind, of, kind of syrupy, I want this to be a pretty thick mixture. So it's, I'm really working it here because I want to have a lot of this and I want it to be really dark. And for us to get a really dark color, you really have to like kind of scrub your brush into that dried paint to get a lot of the paint out of it, if that makes sense. All right, so I have a really nice mixture of color here, really dark, really thick, really highly pigmented. And then using my same brush, size one, starting up here at the top. If your painting is dry, just be really careful. Maybe you wanna turn it upside down. Maybe you wanna turn it to the side so that your, your palm isn't gonna get it wet, just be mindful. And then we're gonna do kind of that same technique, but we're just not gonna add as much color as we did um, the first go around of color. All right, so just some little drops. You don't have to think about it too much. I promise it's still gonna look awesome. And just kind of, you can kind of do that twirly brush technique like I was doing earlier. Maybe, maybe you're kind of blotting it, but you're not even fully lifting it off the paper. This is a fun time to just experiment with some different kind of techniques and get really comfortable with using a round brush. And yeah, I do think that adding a little bit of that burnt sienna, it makes it not like somebody just said it was a nice autumn color. And I love that. I didn't want and to- And Shailene, you moved back to the number pink. five, right? You're back on the number no, five brush. Nope, right? I'm no, still using the one. one. Still using okay, one, five. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. You could definitely could use the five if your five has a really nice fine point. But I uh, like to use a smaller brush when I'm doing details like this especially these little teeny stems we were working on. I feel like you gotta use a small brush for that. Keep that color really dark. If it starts to dry up, gotta add a little color or add a little water. I want this to be a really dark red color. And over here, I'm just gonna, just looking back at what I did already. And I actually feel like I could add a little bit more, a little more that dark color as it's kind of drying. I usually kind of work in maybe like a three layer, three layers of paint for every color, just to really get to some of the dark values I want to get to. So we always start light and then we gradually add a little more of the darker values. And that's how we bring out some dimension by bringing in those darker color values.
you know, another thing that might be kind of a, a cool look is adding just a couple teeny dots just kind of off the top of some of these flowers. So it looks like there's just these little tiny buds that are just coming away from the group just a little bit. I think that feels really nice, actually. All right. So what do you think? Top versus bottom. I definitely prefer the way these top flowers are looking. A lot more dimension, a lot more interest. And this is the part where I could get, <laughs> I can kind of be like, where is a good place to stop here? And that's a question that only I can answer and only you can answer for your specific painting. It's kind of a gut feeling. All right, so let me work on these bottom flowers. A nice way to give up a little bit of the control while you're painting is to kind of hold the end of your paintbrush. Kind of come, you'll kind of have some looser strokes, a little bit less control, which is kind of a fun look. Keep your color. Mixed, make sure it's staying a really dark mixture. Okay. Add a couple of those little, little buds that are floating off the top a little bit. Something I like to try is um, you can either step back from your painting and that'll give you a little bit of context of how the whole painting, how it's looking as a whole. Cause you know, as watercolor painters, we are sitting pretty close to our subject. You know, oil painters are usually, you know, they're standing usually. So they can just step back, step back, take a look. So stepping back, it really helps you to get a little more context for the whole painting. It might help you know, okay, I'm good. This is enough detail. It might help you to know where where painting could use a little more detail, you know, and so on. So stepping back is a really great way to get some perspective. Um, another thing I like to do is just kind of squint my eyes because I feel like squinting my eyes at it. Sometimes that helps me to just kind of see it as a blurry, like kind of loose general <laughs> look. And that helps me to, it's the same thing. It helps me to know if I need to add a little bit more detail add a little more darker colors because I'm just kind of seeing fuzzy blocks and that sort of helps me. I don't know if that makes any sense to you as well, but if it does, hopefully that's a good tip. <laughs> All right, last flower. All right, so I'm gonna pull this up just a little bit. Look at my painting as a whole. And that feels pretty nice. I actually really like how this one turned out. Um, so once this is totally dry, I would then <laughs> I would then erase it, but I don't wanna do that yet. So I'm going to switch it out with the one I already painted just so I can Gotcha. I'll, I'll compare them. So the one I painted for the class is a little bit a little bit less busy. This one has a little bit more fuller flowers. Um, but yeah, they're both they're both neat. They both have a different look, but 
Um, I love how every single time I paint this, it feels just a little bit different. So if you guys would, I would love to see, we can do grid view and I would love if you guys would show me the paintings that you made. Wow, I'm bad at Zoom. How do I figure this out? <laughs> I wanna see everybody. So if you guys could hold it up. I'm gonna look through all of yours. There we go. Oh my goodness. That is awesome. I love it. Some of them are totally like off script and so cool and look really different and detailed. And I love that. Yeah, like everyone did a great job today. Beautiful. As I was cycling through those. Really, really pretty. Oh man, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, everybody did a great job. I'm going to show you, I, um, let's see how I go <laughs> back to this one. Okay, I want to show you the class we're going to be doing next time, which I believe we determined is November 30th. <laughs> we're going to be painting this pomegranate yes, together. So this one is a little bit more detail. It'll be a kind of different technique, but really, really fun. I'm looking forward to this one. And then we'll have another class in December that's going to be... Uh, TB, TBA. <laughs> so <laughs> looking forward to that one as well. Chris, Christmas, theme. Christmas theme. Yes, it will be. it'll be Christmas themes and you can guarantee there'll be some, some flowers and watercolors. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I always love to teach these Michaels classes and yeah, this was a, this was a fun one. So thank you guys for joining. And I'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Bye.